So there's a new Godzilla movie out, and at one point, Godzilla and King Kong yelled each other through a hole in the earth. And it's awesome. So I made it. Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and today I made Godzilla yelling at King Kong. First things first, we need to make our deity lizard, so a little armature wire and tinfoil will give us a skeleton upon which to birth our mighty nuclear iguana. Once I have the armature positioned and ready in a appropriately titan-esque form, I'll start bulking out the body simply by adding clay. I'm not bothered about the perfect shape, I just want to get all the clay in place. I decided to go pretty small with my titans today, which means I don't really need to worry about adding any wire to his arms. He's only got little T-Rex arms, and they'll be resting on his ample thighs, so weight isn't really an issue here. But once I have the general shape generally shaped out, I'll start smoothing and blending seams before starting some scaled-down dental work on what is a fairly recognizable face. Despite being a big radioactive lizard, Bowser has a pretty obvious face shape, and I want to try and capture that as best I can focusing mostly on that ridge that leads up into his kind of pointy nose. Now I am fully aware that at this point, if we stopped and painted him purple, we'd probably get ourselves a lovable, albeit rather creepy dinosaur. But once we get some eyeballs in there and give him a furrowed brow, he'll go from building friendships to burning cities. He's also a tiny bit too smooth for my liking, so I'll start adding a bit of texture just by jabbing this little tool in until I've got sort of a finny, textury look to it. Then we can get started on his wicked chappas, just by adding a little bit of clay up at the top and then shaping that with my knife. Before I get started on the rest of his body, I want to make sure that I give him his lizard six-pack, since it'll be a lot harder to shape this part once I've got his spikes in place. I usually like to do multiple bakes leading up to the final sculpture, but Yoshi has so many superficial details that it was actually easier for me to do it all in one go and then bake it at the end. So once I've got his little fingies appropriately pointy, I'll get started on adding those aforementioned details. This is where our smooth, awkward lizard boy becomes a dashing, chiseled lizard man. Starting with the arms, then working my way down to the tail, I'll add the armored layer on top of his tail before adding texture by dragging random tools across the smooth surface. I need to make sure that I get his tail finished first since the segmented sections will delineate where his back spikes are located. Now in my first attempt at making a Godzilla, I lament the fact that he has three rows of spikes and they're surprisingly obnoxious to make. Sure enough, I enjoyed a little bit more cursed deja vu, but only on a blessedly smaller scale this time around. Now with that being said, I was absolutely chuffed to bits with how it turned out this time, and I wouldn't be that upset returning to another radioactive dinosaur build in the future. With the spikes in place, I'm on to the final texture, which involves blending the scales with his back and adding scale armor onto his legs. It's a pretty simple process of carving lines running horizontally before sectioning them off into tiny squares that get textured so as to look relatively natural. And with those finishing touches, we've got ourselves a terrifying, albeit adorable, mini Godzilla. Then we're ready to move on to making the other half of our titanic duo, Donkey Kong. What's that? Oh, sorry, uh, King Kong. Now in Deity Lizard vs. Royalty Monkey, Kong is roughly the same size as Gojira. I've personally preferred the slighter, smaller iteration of Kong since I love the idea that a plucky, highly intelligent ape, relying on nothing more than his agility, dexterity, and cocoa level intelligence, is able to compete with a much larger, much more laser beamy T-Rex. Probably has something to do with my own small man complex coming into play, but for that reason I opted to make a Kong that is slightly smaller than his 2021 counterpart. Now I say all this when in reality Godzilla was in the oven while I was making Kong, so I didn't have a good point of reference for his size, and he accidentally ended up being a little bit smaller. I did try to bulk him up a bit, but you can only go so far before your well-muscled King of the Apes becomes a hairy ape-faced cloud. I was pretty happy with his torso, and I didn't want to have to start from scratch at this point, so I just decided to cut his arms and legs off. Now, I still couldn't quite figure out what seemed so fundamentally wrong about him at this point, until I realized that instead of an ape, I'd made a huge jacked man. The easiest fix for this is to simply remove his neck. A quick anatomy tip here, people have necks as a byproduct of our giraffe-based evolution, whereas apes do not. Fortunately, dropping his head down to his chest makes him instantly more ape-like, and once we've got some big old chompers in there, we've got ourselves a king in the making. All that needs to be done at this point is adding some fur, and his torso is ready for baking. 
Once the body cools down, I'm ready to add his monkey legs, making sure that he has a powerful and well-defined gluteus maximus. Then a couple fun monkey feet and we can start blending everything into the torso simply by adding some fur. Because his arms are going to be part of his support system, I need to add the armature I removed earlier back in. This is easy enough, just drill a tiny hole and glue some wire in, then bulk it up in the same way as the legs, making sure that his muscles are comically oversized. Think of how hard it is to do a chin up when you weigh 60 kilos, and then imagine the biceps needed for a 50,000 ton chin up. If you're worried that he's starting to look a little bit too muscly, do yourself a favor, pause the video, and look up that photo of the chimp with alopecia. Remember that he doesn't even go to the gym or worry about his protein to carb ratio. That's just his natural body type. Now I want to have one of his hands in that classic ape knuckle stance while the other one was open palmed. But you'll notice in the final sculpture that I ended up going with a full knuckle stance. The real reason for this? Well, I broke all his fingers when I dropped him and then I accidentally stepped on him. I'm a bit clumsy. Now that our titans are finished, I can use them to get the general size for my bases. The plan here is to have Godzilla and Hong Kong screaming down through this fast travel hole at King Kong who is in Hollow Earth screaming back up at him. I basically need to make two separate dioramas then stick them together. XPS foam is my go-to material, and once I've got the shape sorted out, I can cut the center of each piece out. Then I'll cut out a couple thicker pieces to act as the Earth's core. I want to be able to stick both pieces together, so I'm going to use some magnets. I'll mark out where I want my magnets to go, keeping them equidistant from the side and the center shaft, and then a little daub of hot glue will hold them in place. Marking the second foam slab is easy enough by simply using the magnets themselves as markers. Now you might notice that my magnets seem to be covered in glue already, and that's because I wasn't paying attention when I glued the second set in. I glued them in upside down so that their poles were the same, which means that they were basically repelling each other away and it didn't work at all. Whoops. Fortunately, I only cocked up once, so the second time is perfect. Now I can glue the blue onto the yellow and start cutting all the way through the foam. Now I'm not worried about it being a perfect cut since the walls are going to be chunks of stone and dirt anyways, so really the messier the better here. The rest of the foam can be yanked out using pliers, again not worrying much about clean cuts since I actually want it to be pretty gnarly inside, and I'll even come back through and try and smash it up a little bit more before doing the same thing to the outside. I do want to keep the top and the bottom levels distinct, so I'm taking care not to smash the blue foam up too much. And once I have two lovely halves adequately smashed up, I'll start adding all sorts of texture to the top using some gap filler. It's great for making the flat foam a little bit more interesting, and it also helps to fill the seams between the yellow and the blue foam. One thing that I hadn't taken into consideration was how little I know about making cities. I'm so used to making fantasy buildings and rocky outcroppings that when it came to making the little cityscape, I was actually at a loss. So the only idea I had was to make a tiny little road in between where the buildings will sit. Now, as far as the buildings are concerned, that's what we're doing here. Much like the cityscape, skyscrapers are very much outside my comfort zone. They're just big, mostly rectangular shapes, but I don't know, and they're so perfect in their design that it's a lot harder to hide imperfections. But at any rate, my idea was to cut down some pieces of foam into rectangles, then cut those rectangles into slightly more interesting, albeit still vaguely rectangly shapes. I tried to carve some reliefs into them to add a tiny bit of dimension and depth, but I don't know how much it actually shows through in the final piece. And then like anything I make out of foam, it's going to get a coat of black paint and Mod Podge before a base coat of plain black paint. I wanted the buildings to be a stark black to indicate that the majority of the power was out and that the scene was taking place at night. But I also wanted the buildings to have a little bit of color. Now in the movie they were all covered in gaudy neon lights, but I haven't got any lights small enough to work here, so I thought I'd just have to try my hand at painting them. So the idea here is to start with my dark color first and then progressively lighter shades in the center until it gives the illusion of a vibrant glowing light. And it kinda works. I also decided to renege on my previous power outage 
and decided to add a bunch of tiny dots of white and off-white paint. These will help to indicate lights on in windows, and I think it makes a huge difference as far as helping to sell the scale of the buildings. Finally, to give everything a glossy, glassy finish, I painted over just about everything with a UV resin. Painting the base is pretty straightforward. Concrete gray everywhere until the black undercoat is no longer visible. I think it took about two coats to get it to that point. And then I'll add a darker gray for the roads and a bit of the rubble will get the darker gray as well. I'm ready now to figure out where exactly these buildings are gonna sit. I'm not gonna glue them down yet, but I'll at least get a rough estimate as to which buildings are gonna go where, how they'll lie, and sort of whether they're falling into one another. Now don't worry, I don't have jaundice and I'm not a smoker. I was just using yellow inks to dye some material and yellow ink doesn't wash off the hands quite so well. Now I'm using snapped off toothpicks to hold the buildings in place, but before I glue them down, I'll paint on some different shades of gray, hopefully to indicate that the ground here and there is a different material. It's all getting covered up by debris anyways, but at least for now it helps to break up that plain gray. Hollow Earth is a much simpler painting process. We'll go brown as a base coat, then I'll go light brown for a top coat over that, and then I'll dry brush over top with various lighter colors of browns and whites, just to help highlight all the texture that we added in earlier. Then using those same colors, I'll paint the hollow earth shaft in the city brown as well, and then highlight all around the edge where the sort of earth core is showing. Once that's all done, I'm now ready to attach my buildings. To add a little bit more debris and smashed up ground to the city, I'm going to add some rocks and broken clay. This is just super sculpy clay that I have ground down in a coffee grinder until it is a nice rocky texture, and then I'll add a little bit of tile grout just to fill in all the gaps. Then I'm on to the wash. A heavy coating of black wash goes over absolutely everything but the buildings, and I want to go really heavy here so that the lighter grays of the ground and the brown of the grout blend much better with the buildings. It'll also do wonders for adding shadows and depth to the shaft and the hollow earth base. Using the same technique I used for the neon lights on the buildings, I'm going to start adding fire and damage to them, as well as along the ground and inside the hollow earth hole. I'll start with red, then add orange, and finally the smallest amount of yellow, just where the fire would be blazing the brightest. Now my aforementioned jaundice fingers were a result of making some of this stuff right here. This is cotton ball soaked in yellow ink, and when it dries it's still pretty pliable and works well as itty bitty fireballs. I'll cut it up and apply it onto the larger burning sections of the building, then I'll paint a little more color onto them and top the tips with a sooty black to act as the smoke. And with that, our bases are finished and all we have left is painting the titans themselves. This is nice and easy since there's not a great deal of variation here. Godzilla just gets a basic dark green undercoat. Then once that dries, I'll go over the entire thing with a dry brushing of grayish green to highlight all those little scales and textures that I spent hours lovingly creating before finally getting started on his blue boy spikes. Same idea as before, I'll paint the spikes mostly in a darker blue, leaving the tips black, and I'll also make sure to paint the little sections of his chest and neck that light up while he's in full-blown laser beam mode. I'm also gonna paint his mouth and his tongue all in blue. I realize they're not blue, but when he is doing his little laser beam thing, his whole mouth is so vibrant and blue anyways that you can't really tell what color it is. And then at that point, doing the exact same technique as before, we'll start using lighter shades of blue all the way down to essentially white, just to highlight all the tips and make it seem like it is glowing. Then with Gojira finished, I can start painting Kong, who, much like our lizard boy, starts with a nearly black undercoat. I mean, this time it's a brownish black instead of a greenish black, but it's still just a dark undercoat. Then once that dries, I'll dry brush over the top with different shades of brown, starting with the darkest before working my way up to an almost silver brown, just to highlight the tips. And then his mouth gets painted a healthy red, and his teeth will get a lovely bone white coat, and then a tiny bit of brown for edge highlighting. Now the absolute final stage is staging our monsters on their respective bases. And I also made a tiny axe for Kong since Hollow Earth was a tad too drab at this point. But otherwise, we are all done and on to our glamour shots.
Now, while these fellas scream at each other in the background, let me give a big shout out to my newest patrons. Josh Erickson, Jenny E.W., Onyx, Belinda Carpenter, Tamara Mateus, Ryan McCampbell, Anne Bun Creations, Jay Strait, Ellen Daria, Tom Halpin, and Jenny. If you want to help out the channel, you can check out my Patreon. Every little bit helps and goes towards making more tiny, nerdy things. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>